Uh, on the face of it, this seems like a stupid idea because I can't feel my feet already. But this is part of my project of making my training fit in my life and not vice versa. And I really need to get in before I bottle it and not get in. spot mentally I think I'm here on this knife's edge this precipice between fitting life into training or fitting training into life and if you go one way if you fit the training into life you're alright but if you try and fit life into training then you can end up resenting it wondering what I mean by resentment let me ask you a question have you ever got to the stage in your training cycle where actually going out to do whatever training it is that you're doing feels more like a bind than a joy that's all right short term like for me with my iron distance race I think I can manage that but long term if it always feels like a bind if it always feels like a commitment and you start to resent you're not going to be in it long term in fact we have had a friend who trains so hard for one particular event a double ultra that he's never gone anywhere near distance running again, haven't we? Yeah. And that's a sad thing, it's a shame, because his training had to take over from his life rather than vice versa. So this week, we're putting the fun back into training because that <laughs> is the Isle of Wight, baby. <laughs> And if you're wondering what screams fun about the Isle of Wight, well, as in with last week's video, we did a run with Tom so that I could say goodbye to him before we moved to Thailand. This week, we're going to the Isle of Wight because one of my other best mates, Ed, lives here and it's actually his birthday today. So we're going to surprise him. He's got no idea we're coming. We're actually quite excited. We've got a, we've got a plan where we're going to hide under the lid of his hot tub and bust out on him. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous because yeah. I'm very claustrophobic. Yeah, Mary's claustrophobic, so we're having to deal with this as we go. But it should be quite good fun, and we'll try and video it if we can. But I don't want to give the game away. Oh, and also, I am actually training while I'm here. I mean, kind of, that's the point of the video, is making my training fit in, and, and we'll get to that. Uh, but just to add some jeopardy in, we were um, in traffic on the way to the ferry, and there was a massive crash, and they'd shut a road. We missed our ferry. We had to get the next ferry, which was an hour later. Then there was another crash getting off the ferry in the Isle of Wight, and now we're in the middle of nowhere trying to get to the house before Ed gets there, because he's on the way there now. Have I talked fast enough? Have I explained it well enough? Who knows? I don't know if it's going to work. We've just made it ahead of him. We've got to get into the annex now, which is where we're staying. Come on, Winnie. This is the hot tub where we're going to hide under this lid. <laughs> <laughs> Hat on. <laughs> this might be him. The tension is palpable. This sounds like him. This is him. Okay, that didn't go to plan whatsoever because we were in the hot tub and Ed just slammed the top shut on us because he was in so much shock. <laughs> so I didn't get much footage at all because the other GoPro that I set up was um, a faulty SD card. So yeah, that's the very definition of a damp squib. But now that the dust has settled and we are with Ed, I'm going down to the sea to do my first piece of exercise where I'm making 
my training fit in with the life, which is this, in this case, I'm just gonna try and see if I can swim in the sea for, I don't know how long, might be 10 minutes, might not even be that. I think it's gonna be really cold. How are you feeling in your sleeping bag, Mary? Oh, I'm good, cozy. <laughs> Ridiculous coat. This is the piece of clothing she gets the most compliments on ever. Yeah, not usually when I'm wearing it like Hard to look cool coming out of there. I'm hardly a Bond girl, and my face has gone completely numb. How was that? Cold. Okay, honesty time. I 100% would have bottled that if it wasn't for the fact I was trying to make a video about fitting training into life because as soon as I got in the sea, my feet just went completely numb and I wanted to cry. Um, but people were watching me and, and also I was making a video so I just want to be honest but I, I came out of the sea feeling really really happy because hang on because I booked myself onto a half iron race next week and I was panicking that I wouldn't be able to even swim the distance let alone feel good swimming it and I just swam a thousand meters felt pretty decent so no complaints here um, and that's all about the finding the joy again, really. Mary, mm -hmm. I've just had a genius idea. Oh yeah? I'm just gonna warm myself up a second. Oh, <sighs> oh goodness, just get it. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Oh my God. It's the next day now and uh, I just was reflecting last night on the swim and how it felt different somehow like the process of it felt different and I think I've got to the point where it's because on a Saturday at the moment when I have to go down the lake it everything feels like a bind um, because I know that this training this iron distance training is a necessity and so I'm having to drive to the lake I'm having to get in the lake it's freezing cold all of that whereas yesterday I'm on holiday seeing my friends, we're staying in an annex. I got to go and train in the sea, as in my training fitted into the life rather than the other way round. And it was it's a tiny little mental difference, but for me, it made all the difference. <laughs> By the way, I do realise what it sounds like is that I'm saying that if you're getting bored with training and if you're finding that your training is taken over life, go on holiday. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is make the most of each of your circumstances every weekend. So, for example, the reason we're coming over here is because it was Ed's birthday. So then I'm making my training fit in with that rather than vice versa. I could have quite easily said, I'm in a really deep Ironman training block. I can't go anywhere because I need to do that workout. Look, hi Albie. <laughs> but unfortunately for me, swimming is not the only thing that I have to do on a weekend. I actually have to do now, I think I mentioned it in the last video last week, brick sessions which is a long bike followed by some kind of a run sometimes short sometimes long and the original aim today was to do a brick session that was get off of the ferry from the Isle of Wight and cycle home but the weather doesn't look so good and I don't know if there's such a thing as a super begrudge but actually I'm not keen to do the long cycle and have really bad weather because it's due to be thunderstorms rain the works 
So my compromise is that I enjoy this lovely day and this lovely weekend with friends and being outdoors and being at the beach, which I don't get to do very often. And then I get home and I smash it on the turbo. It's not an ideal compromise. I wouldn't usually be going on the turbo at this time of year, but I think it's a compromise worth taking. And just like that, we're heading home as it starts to, the heavens start to open. Oh, it's been a nice little weekend, hasn't it? Yeah, it actually feels like a real break. It's so good to have a change of scenery. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Like, it's not, you can't do this every weekend, what we've just done in terms of, you know, if training is getting stale, go away on a holiday. It's, I'm not, that's unrealistic and stupid, but we were going here anyway. This was the priority and then I made training yeah. fit in here. I mean, I know I am stupid most of the time, but I'm not this stupid. I'm not going to resent the cycling and then resent cycling in this. This is atrocious. I have an admission to make. You may hear it in my voice. My voice hasn't broken, by the way. I am a little older than 12, 13 years old. I'm really getting smashed by hay fever at the moment and I just feel, I almost feel like I've got the flu. So I've been doing lateral flow tests, making sure I haven't got COVID, I don't. But I do feel completely wiped out. So this bike right now that's supposed to be 100 kilometers, maybe just under three hours and then a run, I'm just, I'm giving myself full permission to see what happens, to see if I can get to the end, see how I feel on the bike. So just letting you know, very similar to Mary's race last week, that if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and holding out and carrying on may actually be counterproductive. So I'm gonna see what's in there. This is the weirdest sensation I've ever had on turbo. From here up, I just feel like I wanna pop my eyes out and smash them, claw my nose off and eat it. I am suffering so bad from hay fever there, it's just grim. But, below the neck, my heart rate's staying down. I'm putting out more power than usual than I would do on a base ride. And I'm actually feeling pretty strong, so I'm now stuck in the middle of this. Ugh. Do I stay on the turbo? Do I get off? It's just hay fever, I'm fairly confident of that. I'm not ill. My HRV4 training app tells me I'm okay. So now the mental battles begin. What has just happened? That just happened, really, honestly, because of you. I did not want to do that. I am so surprised that I did it. Uh, too much to compute. I cannot, yeah, it's just thanks to you holding me accountable and that is very genuine. I do have a little matter of a brick run, 5K now to get out of the way, so let's talk about it while we're out on the run. <laughs> well, let's call that what it was. A grim, hard day at the office and a bit of a mistake as well because obviously you're supposed to cut to me running but I took the wrong GoPro out with no SIM card and it's one of the old GoPros. I just, I think that's probably an indication of where my mind is right now. And I got straight over the threshold of the door and I just had to sit down like my, my body just went, okay, you're done. And now I'm hanging on in then trying to stay awake. My body's slowly shutting down on me and making me want to go to sleep and it's 6 p.m. So I'm aiming for 8 p.m. sleep because I really believe in recovery and making sure that you get enough. But I'm gonna process all of my thoughts over the next couple of days and I'm gonna share them with you right now somewhere I think you know. And that leads us to here, as you know, but we're gonna do it real, a real quick one. So it's, I think that was a nice one. I like that, I like that. Put the button nice. on that one. Uh, I just wanted to be really honest about where I'm at now because actually this is a couple of days after we filmed, or I filmed the last bit of the video where I did the brick session and um, yeah, I think I may have flown too close to the sun just back there and, and I wanna be honest about it because I know I was talking about fitting, training and life together but I have been pretty ill the last couple of days, um, definitely not COVID, did some tests, so I was suffering pretty horrendously with hay fever and that always, at certain parts of the season, it makes me feel like yeah. I've got the flu. This week, the middle of May, always gets you so bad and you have been really struggling, like I've really felt for you. Yeah, so I pushed on, Sunday I did that session and I felt, Monday morning I woke up 
I mean, my heart rate variability app said dial back intensity, but I was desperate to swim, so I did go and swim. Are you trying not to yawn again? <laughs> but I tried not to do any more than the swim, or I couldn't, could I? I went home and I, I went to bed at like 8.30. And yeah. I've, I've moved my day around today so that today is now my rest day to try and just let myself catch up. Like, yeah. You know, the worst thing is, I can't taste food. I can't taste chocolate or coffee or anything. It's awful. How do you know you can't taste chocolate? Um, I guessed. Where's the chocolate? You bought me chocolate at the weekend. I'm so nice. You're so nice to me. <laughs> She's very nice to me. She bought me chocolate because I was feeling poorly, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, there's no point in eating it, though, because I was like, oh, I love chocolate. Oh, I can't taste it. Yeah, and it's a bit like last week, just saying you have to listen to your body sometimes and you can't do it all the time. Yeah, and I'm proud I have. I've stepped back. Yeah, I'm proud of I'm you. I'm good, and I haven't trained today when I could quite have easily got up and trained at 5.30 and I said, I said, no, Ben, no. You're right there. Awkward silence. Yeah, we'll finish, we finish on awkward silence. <laughs> oh, okay. And the merch is ready and there is a link in this video if you want to have a look at it, but we will do a full video on it soon. Can I have some? Yeah, you can have some. See you soon.